I'm Vegas Runner, here to break down some MMA. We have UFC live from Pittsburgh on Sunday night, which will be broadcasted live on Versus. And I believe the undercard will once again be broadcasted, like usual, on Facebook via UFC. With that said, we do have four main events, more or less, in the main card. Uh, they are calling the main event Story and Marquardt. But again, there's four main fights on that versus card. I have premium plays for three of those, and I'll give you an opinion on the other. With that said, come fight day, if not the day prior, on my Twitter account. That's twitter.com slash Vegas Runner. Just go to Twitter, at Vegas Runner. I pass along all my opinions. I pass along sports information for everything. And I also pass along free picks. With that as well, you'll get any premium plays in boxing or MMA because don't forget, being here in Vegas, dealing with a lot of bookmakers throughout the country, I get a lot of breaking information, a lot of information on what other wise guys and sharps are doing, and many times that doesn't take place until the day of the fight. So having Twitter available allows me to share that information with you guys and if I'm stepping up to the window making a premium play, I will pass it along on my Twitter feed. Now let's get the UFC live. Coming into this one, we're 80% on our last 15 UFC plays. And we're 17-3 and three on boxing and MMA combined premium plays. Like I said, I have three of them for the main card. Let's start off with the biggest dog on that board. And that's Moorcraft. I know a lot of you out there disagree with me because Mitrione, Matt Meathead Mitrione, for some reason or other, has built a following after being on Tough. Um, and I think his, his legend only grew after knocking out Kimbo Slice. Um, with that said, I don't see any reason a 4-0 professional fighter should be a minus 300 this early on in his career when he really hasn't proven to be a well-rounded fighter. On the flip side, looking at Christian Moorcraft, this is only going to be his third UFC fight. With that said, he's 7-1 professionally. So he has more fights, has a little more experience. More importantly, when you look at his wins, three have come by knockout, four have come by submission. That tells me he's a lot more well-rounded and there's a lot more ways that he can beat you. Looking at Mitch Rion, it's simple. He has zero takedown attempts. He wants to stand there and slug it out, and that's exactly what he's not going to get with Moorcraft. At 6'6", I believe Christian Moorcraft is going to have a huge height advantage. Because of that, he'll be able to muscle Mitch Rion against the cage and slowly but surely take him to the ground. When he does that, We'll see one thing happen, and that's Mitrione out of his element. Don't be surprised if Moorcraft is able to slap on a submission. At the very least, he should be able to grind out a nice decision. It's a simple fight for him. Don't stand there and trade with Mitrione since that's his only weapon. I think Moorcraft will be a lot smarter than that. Because of that, I'm taking the value. I'm going to step up and make a play on Christian Moorcraft, plus 250 as a premium play. Remember, take it to the ground, Moorcraft. Stay aggressive when you're on top of them, and you should get the easy win. Let's move up the ladder to the next fight. Check Congo, Pat Berry. Congo is a minus 200 favorite, and I really think this one should be higher. Bottom line, Barry has a lot of fans because he's a puncher, and Betters love, fans love punchers because they always have a shot, even when losing, to land the big punch. With that said, I've seen Congo evolve. Since his surgery, we're not seeing that one-dimensional striker anymore. He is now the kind of guy who's willing to use his size, his frame, and take guys down and create a lot of problems on them by laying on top and delivering that ground and pound. That's exactly what we're going to see here by Czech Congo. Let's not forget, he's 61% on 
on his strikes. So his success rate is very high. He lands his strikes. And a big guy like him at six foot four could do some damage to someone like Barry, who's only 5'11". Let's also not forget he's 69% successful on his takedowns, meaning out of every 10 takedown attempts, Chet Congo will get his guy on the mat seven times. If he takes Pat Barry down, this will be an easy fight. Yes, I've been told Barry's been training with Death Clutch. That's what I've been told. He's been training with, with Death Clutch and his wrestling will be improved. But that's simply takedown defense. Don't kid yourself and think that his wrestling has improved where he's going to want to take Congo down. His wrestling training was simply to try to avoid takedowns because he is so weak on the ground. But I don't think training with Death Clutch for that short amount of time is going to be enough to stuff the takedowns of a guy that's as big as Czech Congo. Bottom line, reach advantage will be key in the striking. And I really think Congo can make an easy fight of this one. Look for Congo to get him in the clinch and wear Barry down and take him down, like I said, to an easy ground and pound victory. Just avoid the big punches, check, and this could be an easy win. Let's not forget, Congo has lost three of his last four UFC fights. So this is a huge fight for him. But those were against Brown, Mir, Cain Velasquez, um, you know, high level competition where someone like Barry who's 3 and 2 in the UFC this is a huge step up for him bottom line he has zero takedown attempts just like Mitch Rehone so this is a guy who just wants to stand there and trade with you and like Mitch Rehone he's not going to get his wish against Congo Congo's a great striker so he can i think even outstrike him but why make it difficult on yourself when you know you can outclass them on the mat? So go out there, take them down, and get us our easy win. That's the second premium playing UFC. Finally, the main event features our boy Rick Horror Story against Nate Marquardt. Nate the Great was a minus 165 against Anthony Johnson. When Anthony Johnson was unable to take this fight, Horror Story was offered it, and right away he said, give me the fight. Let's not forget, we just backed Story less than four weeks ago when he took care of Alves as a plus 200 underdog. As of now, he's a minus 130 favorite, and I think that's a ton of value. Marquardt's coming down from 185. That tells me one thing. He wasn't as powerful as many believed at that weight, and it was obvious against guys like Sonnen, and I really think it'll be obvious here. Don't think that all of a sudden Marquardt's going to be the bigger guy because he fought at 185. Rick Story on fight night, according to proven sources in the know, walks into the fight at around 190 pounds on fight night. So he will not be the smaller guy by any means. Let's not forget, against Okami, against Sonnen, Marquardt, just doesn't do well with wrestlers. And Story, more importantly, is one of those wrestlers who's relentless. And he uses that wrestling to outstrike his opponents. Story 6-0 in the UFC. And in each and every one of those fights, he has landed more strikes than his opponent. That's correct. He landed more strikes than Alves, the best striker in the division, they were saying. The best striker he's ever going to face, they were saying. And yet, Story used his wrestling to set up his striking. And that's what I love about this kid. If Marquardt thinks he's going to outstrike him, he'll be in for a shock. Look for Story to push him against the fence and slowly wear on Marquardt. According, again, the proven sources, this weight cut has not been easy for Nate the Great. And I think as we get to the second and third round, we're going to start to see that power diminish and it'll be an easy win for Story. Bottom line, Story knows how to get out of trouble. He avoids 67% of strikes, meaning 
Out of every 10 strikes, that kid gets out of the way of seven of those. So he knows how to get away from the strikes and use that to his advantage. He'll get inside, he'll wrap those arms around Mark Court, he'll take them down, and he'll stay on top of them just like he did to Alves, and he will frustrate his opponents. Bottom line, I'm a big fan of Mark Court like everybody is, but this weight cut is extremely draining and it will show come Sunday night. So let's go ahead, backstory once again, this time as a small favorite. So our three premium plays, let's go over them once again. We're going with Christian Moorcraft at plus 250. We're going with Czech Congo at minus 200. And we're going with Rick Horror Story at minus 130. The other main card fight is Howard and Brown. I like Howard, but I don't think he should be minus 250. I don't think Brown offers much value at plus 190, but with that said, I think Howard wins this fight, but I'm not willing to lay that kind of chalk unless I believe I'm getting the best of it, and I don't think that price offers up the best of it. Finally, there's a great undercard with a lot of value. I'm trying to confirm some premium plays. I do have some leans. Guys like Gamborian at plus 200 offer value. I may be able to confirm. I'm not sure. Uh, Joe Daddy Stevenson, he should get his win, but is he worth laying the chalk? Joe Lazon, he's going to get his win, but is he worth laying the chalk? And finally, Roberts and Oliveira should get their wins as well, but should we lay the minus 110s, minus 115s that are available? That's what I'm going to try to find out over the next 48 hours. But as of now, we have three premium plays in MMA, three premium plays in boxing. So that's six premium plays in all for this weekend. And we're going to try to confirm some more as we put our 17-3 and record on the line. I'm Vegas Runner. Thanks for joining once again. Don't forget, follow me on Twitter at Vegas Runner for up-to-date information, free picks, and more day in and day out. Thanks again. Enjoy the fights. Next week, hey Klitschko and anything else we could uncover.